Welcome back to part two of the Truth Stream adventure with David and Shane. Welcome back, guys. So good to have you. And we, we are going to pick up uh, a little bit from the FTX uh, scandal, and then we're going to take this in a probably some cool new direction. So, so please, um, what what is the latest going on with the FTX scandal? We we have heard that uh, the 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 clown with the the brown hair uh, he is he's not been arrested quite yet, and he's off going to these events and speaking at things. And you know, if if in fact it's what's well, we'll see if it's really him or not. But um, but yeah, what what what's the latest in the FTX scandal? David, we'll start with you. Okay. Well, you know, from what I can gather and what I see is like, it's, they're basically circling the wagons, as it were, you know, and they're surrounding this, uh, you know, they're surrounding Sam Bankman Freed and they're trying to give him an out. And the out is, oh, well, he just didn't know it was way out of his hands. Oh, it was way over his head. He didn't have the competency to address it. It became way too big, way too fast. Da, 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 da. But come on, you do not lose eight billion dollars of and, and have no accounting for it and then they they know for a fact that he absolutely dipped in to depositors funds and loaned them over to alameda i mean if anything is a class you know fraud you can see it right there just ask any lawyer go out there and talk to any lawyer who does your real estate deals or anything that you're doing and just say hey what what's your trust account all about well do you think they're going to touch that trust account? Because that's not really their money. Yes, they're holding it in trust. Yes, they're managing the money, but they're not utilizing it to go out and buy their Ferrari or pay for their, you know, their little uh, condo downtown, right? They're not doing that. Why? Because they would lose their license that fast and more than likely face jail time because it is theft. So let's call a spade a spade. The guy literally went in there knowingly and stole as much of all of these depositors funds as he could, sends it over to the parent company, Alameda. Now, they had thought that they would be able to invest it, make a heap of dough, $8 billion to invest that they can make a couple billion off that 8 billion, then throw the money back, right? And nobody would be the wiser. But the house of cards fell from underneath them. And as a result, they're standing there naked, right? Everyone can see what's happened. So now you've got all the big media players and all the political people that backed them. What are they doing? They're circling the wagons and they're trying to cover this guy's ass. Basically, is how I see it. Pardon the, you know, I shouldn't say it like that. But. In, in his defense, though, you know, uh, it's not cheap to cater those orgies, and nootropics are very. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and if it is, if it is incompetence, well, hey, what about criminal negligence? If it is incompetence, there's still a criminal element to it. There's criminal negligence when you're a CEO, you sign on. And as a director of any corporation, you have what's called joint and several liability with that legal entity, right? The buck stops with you and you have, it's incumbent upon you to exercise your due diligence. Now, if you don't have it up here yourself, then you hire it, you bring it in and you make sure there's infrastructure in place that prevents this kind of stuff from going on. How many people were hurt? How many pension funds were literally destroyed? I mean, we're talking about lives here, life savings. It may be a pittance to these people that are way upstairs there, you know, to the Gary Ginslers of the world that are worth over a hundred million dollars, by the way. It may be a pittance to him, but for some other folks, hey, that was their mom and dad's life savings. That's all they had. Right. And so I think Congress needs to actually step up and do their job and hold an inquiry and get to the bottom of it. And there needs to be accountability. No, it's just me. And that's how I feel about it. I just think it's absolutely insane what we're watching. We're watching a dog and pony show. I mean, like Shane, you were saying earlier when we were off camera and you were talking about how they put, you know, um, what's her name? The big uh the oh, you know Martha, the Martha Stewart Martha yeah Stewart, Martha Stewart went to jail. She for, was a uh, billionaire. Go yeah. ahead, Shane. Go ahead. Yet uh, Friedman's still walking around with uh, you know a fuzzy Jex head hairdo and yeah. uh, dropping comments like, "Oh, I was pretty sure 
I was pretty sure we were financially okay before yeah. swapping those trades and doing those deals. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, was, yeah, I was fairly confident, fairly confident we were liquid. Mm-hmm. And I mean, rightly so, Dave. You say Congress have got to step in, but here we go again. Yeah. The information coming out, there were just as many on the Republican side taken yeah. donations as yeah. the Democrats. Well, who, who's going to step in and say, oh, yeah, look, sorry, I made a mistake. When have we heard a politician say that? Well, I'm sorry, but I've got to resign. But, you know, it's just... It's poppycock. It's It's It's, absolute poppycock. You know, they don't have any integrity or resolve. Exactly. It's it's just more testament to the fact that uh, the, the heightened levels of corruption, and you don't even have to leave the United States to prove that. No, you, don't. you know, let's let's put Ukraine and what what happened with uh, yep. uh, with their um, cryptocurrency yep. uh, scheme on the side. Yep. Let's not even step outside the boundaries of the U.S. Yeah, and how on earth are is Ukraine turning around, taking what was given, you know, as foreign aid, right, to uh, assist in the war effort and to compensate people that have been dispossessed of their homes and their possessions and all that. And yet they're taking the money and they're investing in an FTX. I mean, that's just, (laughs) that just is unbelievable. And how is there no accountability for that? Like who's monitoring the use of the funds? Because when you, when you give foreign aid, Foreign aid is designated for a specific purpose. They are designated funds. And it's not so that you can take the money and actually make a profit on it. It's so you utilize it to bring the relief that you actually were requesting it for in the first place. Well, it doesn't sound like that happened, does it? Yeah, well, it's it's absolute garbage. I could just I mean, get on a soapbox and go wild. But That's it. But <laughs> any, anybody listening to the, you know, as citizen journalists that are on the ground there in the Ukraine that are actually bringing forward footage of the Russian military organising aid to the Ukrainian people. Yeah. Yet then you've got the re- Ukrainian snipers up on the rooftops taking pot shots at the Russian soldiers, taking them out so that the Ukrainians who are desperate for the aid that they should be getting in, you know, uh, survival packages right. actually scatter back to the winds. It's just, yeah. Mm, how you, how you the even narrative is just, there's something off. There's something yeah. seriously yeah. off. Yeah. And, you know, you're literally watching. Sometimes you're seeing um, um, kind of like displays. I've seen videos where they actually staged an entire um, you know, yeah. advertisement almost and made it look like there was all this stuff and it was just a stage. It was absolutely yep. not true. Oh, yeah. yeah and, you got the camera it, close to the ground and you got the fellow with the smoke machine pumping the billows to, you know, crazy. make it look like there's a grenade yeah. just gone off and it's just, it's yeah. absolute garbage. And so, you know what? The bottom line is, unfortunately, I think a lot of people in the West and and, and around the globe, let's be honest, have, have lost absolutely all confidence in any type of, you know, traditional media that you're actually getting a, a story that has some truth in it. Oh, you might have a line here and there for sure, but you're not getting the absolute facts. And, and that, and, and because they've lost that confidence, when you lose that kind of confidence, right? Nobody knows what to believe or who to believe or how to actually make, because we make decisions as human beings based on the information that's presented to us in front of us. That's how we work right? That is how we assess the world by our senses and how we process information. And with that information and filter it through, let's be honest, our own biases and convictions, that's how we move forward and make decisions. Well, when all the information out there is getting you to believe a narrative that is completely, absolutely false, how can you have any confidence in making any decision moving forward? Because you're not dealing with hard evidence real facts and you when you feel that lack of confidence that per, that that germinates a sense of deep level of insecurity and i'll tell you what if there's anything going on right now in the united states and most of the world it is a level of uncertainty that is creating a societal anxiety that is truly palpable right now 
and I, and I get it. I hear it when I hear questions coming back from, you know, my own channel I'll give you an example of one that is just unbelievable really. But so in this crypto space, one of the most secure things that you hear is not your keys, not your crypto. This is a big, big mantra that's out there. And this will help maybe segue into talking about exchanges. But one of the things that has come out recently is, you know, and of course, there's the promotion of if it's not your keys, get it off exchanges, put it on a cold storage wallet. Well, some of the information that is coming out now, this kind of, and, I, and I've heard it and people have asked me, so I responded to it in a video, but basically is, oh, they're going to delist you know, XRP and XLM from cold storage wallets. Well, that is absolute baloney, number one. And number two, you don't delist anything. It's just, would they have an application on there that would support it or not? And if they don't, well, there are mechanisms that you're able to use. Your crypto is not on your cold storage device. It's on the blockchain and you can access it in multiple ways. But hey, I mean, if you want, we can talk a little bit about exchanges and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's just too risky. I would, what do you think, Shane? Uh, absolutely. You know, it's a standard uh, standard delivery that, that we give our members as well. You know, get it off an exchange. Use an exchange for what it's called for, mm -hmm. an exchange. Right. Fiat in one side, your digital out the other, and right. that's it. Anybody and, who yeah. leaves, anybody mm -hmm. who leaves any amount on any of the hot exchanges – uh, you know, you're liable to make a donation at some point in time because if they decide all of a sudden we're not going to support this token, we're not going to support that coin, we're not going to carry that asset, that's it. It's gone. Yeah, and and you would you know? have avoided the whole FTX thing, or you wouldn't have been a victim of that. Absolutely. Before we 110 percent or 120 billion percent, you know, depending on how much you know you decided to donate to. You know, whomever SBF's, somebody has it. SBF's uh, Toyota. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Before we get too far away from FTX, you know, we had a friend yeah. call and uh, uh, let us know that, I mean, there was a, a marital disagreement uh, over, I mean, she was very smart about investing in ISO coins, but, you know, to the layman, it's all the same thing. So, you know, he might have been angry with her for investing in FTX in his mind. And, you know, this does sort of cast a very big wet blanket over over the whole digital asset sphere, especially mm -hmm. those that, that don't know a lot about it. So mm -hmm. how will that impact uh, more savvy investors? I mean, will it will it at all or? Well, I mean, in this marketplace, you're talking about probably one of the most volatile markets in the world. It trades 24-7, 365 days a year, but has some amazing because it's so nascent. I mean, we're talking about a brand new asset class and you see so few of those. Look, the, the probably it's been a hundred plus years since there's been truly a new asset class. And so when you think about it, think about it in this terms. Now, with exchanges, I think Shane is right on the money here. You are at risk because you don't know how solvent an exchange is. Remember, an exchange is a centralized unit, right? These exchanges are, they call them centralized sexes. CEX is a centralized exchange. Now, when you buy on there and you hold on there, you actually have a representation of a balance that you hold, but it's actually not crypto, right? Because it's just a ledger entry on that exchange. Now, when you go to withdraw it, if you can withdraw it to a cold storage wallet, then it becomes the digital asset, truly. Now, having said that, there's has any of these tokens, these ISO tokens, so we're, let's look at XRP, XLM, Hedera Hashgraph, Algorand, Quant, and the like. Have they lost any of their utility? They haven't. Have their ecosystems diminished in size? No. In fact, they have expanded, especially, take a look at XRP. You've got the Bank of America. And like we said last time, you know, I think the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, those are just two that are sitting there on the sidelines saying, once this case is solved, settled, we're going to be using Ripple's on-demand liquidity platform, and it utilizes XRP. So you're telling me that the infrastructure, they're literally building central bank digital currencies, and this will get into another subject in a second, but you've got them building digital 
uh, central bank digital currencies for nation states, one of them being the United States, another one being Australia, another one being Great Britain. This company, Ripple, is building those, and the, and the bridge asset is going to be XRP. So when you think of it in those terms, you can't look at it and like, oh, throw the baby out with the bathwater. So let's take 2008, for example. Should we have just gotten rid of the stock markets altogether because Lehman Brothers went down and we had the whole 2008 fiasco, right? When the whole system was imploding? No, of course not. Because we know that that's how the world works. That's how value is transferred. That's how liquidity happens in this world. It's because of markets, right? So you've got this brand new asset class. And yeah, of course, when anyone loses something, let's be honest, there's pain involved, right? And once bitten, twice shy. But does that mean that the, the, the technology of where we're going is somehow slowed down? It hasn't. That engine has really been revving up even all the more. What you're going to see now, though, is a knee-jerk reaction towards regulation. And I have to ask myself, is it truly knee-jerk or was this whole thing planned out from the first place? Right. Because that's exactly what they want. And so that's kind of how you have to look at it. To me, the asset class itself and where this is going in the future has lost absolutely zero amount of its utility. And so I look at that, I am not even the least bit shaken out. It doesn't scare me. And another thing too, when you're dealing with a space like this, take the emotion out of it. Yeah. Just remove that. Look, most people right now are motivated by one level of fear or another. And that's why when they measure a bear market and a bull market, what do they use? They use the fear and greed index. Why? Because people are motivated by one or the other, and neither one of those emotions are healthy. When you're, when you're just focused on your greed, you're going to make bad decisions. And I'll tell you another thing. When you're focused on your fear, you're not gonna make, you're, you are going to be decimated. You've mm -hmm. got to take the emotion out of it, and you have to start thinking for, in a logistical way long term and plus put other things in place of those things so when we hear about wall street and gordon gecko comes on he says oh greed it's good look i'm going to tell you something there are far more better motivators for accumulating wealth than greed i can tell you that right now how about caring for your fellow man how about having the desire to you know, to leave something in posterity to your children and your grandchildren, or to pay for somebody else who could never afford an education. How about paying off somebody else's mortgage? Never think of that, you know? And then when it comes to fear, you know how you kill fear when it comes to finances? Learn to be a giver. Because you take away that fear of not having enough, because that's what the real down the core is. Will I ever have enough? If I, what if I do this, I could lose it. And then, and then what about me? Well, you know, and it becomes so self-focused. But when you take that shield away and you actually learn, you know, not to think like that, where it's not all about self, then that fear has no power over you. And I'll tell you what, that is the greatest gift you can ever give yourself and no one can take it from you. That's a fact. I got a totally question. agree, David. And just, just, just quickly, Scott, I'll just on that point, David, I think that's that's one of the most important aspects to focus on because once you get rid of that fear, you, you're self centric is more in tune to be looking at opportunities to give. Good point. So true. If that if that FOMO, that fear of missing out, mm -hmm. is removed. Yep it's it just takes the blinkers off because as yeah. you say it's either have i got enough or am i going to miss out yeah I agree you know with that. i agree with you 100 yeah. percent. and and it, it does it changes you and you know what it's a fundamental shift in the way you think because you know right now most of us are they're trying to i would say it this way they're trying to um you know get us to start thinking in realms of fear look at the whole c thing if you didn't get the thing, wow, did they ever scare the dickens out of a lot of people into that? No one using their own common sense about it, you know, and just thinking, okay, 99.9% um, .9 of the people that get, you know, this um, actually survive it. Do I really need to be, have a, you know, biological shield operating on the inside of me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> with, with regard to fear and, and a lot of people, investors in the space, uh, 
we fear CBDCs, we fear a centralized model and yeah. so on and so forth. And this FTX debacle may be used to uh, let people know, hey, we need we need that centralized level of control or this is going to just be too scary for everyone. Sure. But, and and they're going you're right there. You know, that's absolutely true. And I think I think that's where you're going to see this, the bringing in, you know, of a lot of these type of regulations that we need. To, we need to step in and look after you because wow you know this is just such a dangerous thing and and really and it's such a disingenuous load of baloney it has nothing to do with protection but everything to do with control yeah. right right and no, so it's... you know but unfortunately we're talking about a herd mentality now yeah. where do most people get their apologetic you know apologetics is basically just what i believe and why i believe it OK, so where do most people get that? Well, they get it from the fifth estate. Well, what's the fifth estate? Well, it's all the media that's out there. And now you topple on that social media. And with social media, you get rewarded with what? One of the greatest cotton candies that the human ego desires, affirmation. So if you follow the crowd, we're going to affirm you. We're going to applaud you. We're going to give you 100,000 subscribers. We're going to on and on and on. But you step off those rails and you start to question, oh, my goodness. Well, it's not affirmation anymore. What is it? The thing that majority of human beings dread the most, rejection. But not just rejection, you know, like here, broad-based public rejection. And it can have a humongous effect. So most people are forming their worldview and their narrative based on the carrot and the stick. And so they're not using critical thinking. We've thrown that out the window. You can't even have healthy debate anymore. Very because true. if you do, you're going to be eviscerated. You can't walk onto where we should have healthy debate. You can't walk onto a university campus and, and with any kind of certainty, feel that you're going to be able to communicate your thoughts, opinions, ideas where they should be debated in an environment that is going to, uh, you know, at, hey, it's okay if someone wants to poke holes in my my ideas and thoughts and opinions. I have, I welcome that. But let's do it where there's debate so that we can get further down the road. But that's not even allowed. So, you know, that's no, it. I'm just curious, like, what do debate classes even look like anymore? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 they measure the likes on Facebook. <laughs> That's, That's right. The it's it's, it's the professor coming out there and telling you what your what what your position and point of view is. That's the debate. <laughs> or or or, or you want to get an A in this class? You're going to take my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to be respectful to my pronoun as well. Oh God! No, exactly. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I brain. You know, you get this Judy. constant flow of dopamine with every oh, like and so on. Insane. It doesn't even matter what your opinion is. After a while, yeah. you just want that dopamine. It's like it. hacking at the keys of the piano to get the food to drop down the chute. And that's what yeah. we've been reduced to. Wow, and that's it, a great analogy. I love that. You're absolutely yeah. right. And and that's what it is. You're being emotionally fed. And what's really, really scary about that is few people will even recognize it as that. Because then you, you start peeling back the onion and you ask them, okay, well, why do you believe that? Well, because, you know, and it's okay, well, let's take that down the road a little more and down the road a little more until it gets to the point where this is what they do. Oh, you're crossing my boundaries. Can't talk to me. Talk to you because they get to a point where their argument just doesn't hold any more water. And then they get angry at you and they make it about boundaries. Boundaries. What are you talking about? You just sat there for 45 minutes telling me everything you thought and believed. And, da -da 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 -da. and here I come to rebut. But my rebut is crossing your boundaries. I, I, you know, I don't understand that. But then, you know? but then you cross that line and become a xenophobic anti-Semite. Yeah, or they make it out, make you out to be that, which is not at all the truth, right? No, and it's it's similar to the conversation I've had with a number of people when it comes up about the digital assets. It's like, well, okay, but you're in that space. You, what's the difference between crypto and digital? It's all the same. It's all online. Well, hang on a minute. It's totally different. Crypto is similar to a fiat dollar. It's a promissory note. You put your money into the exchange and get a value of X amount right. in a particular 
NFT or yeah. a token, a coin, a representation of, of a fluffy little dog, yep. whatever you want to invest in. Mm-hmm. And you can't do anything with it. And you can't whereas, do anything with it. Whereas the digital asset market or the digital um, asset side of things, you get your XRP, mm-hmm. you transfer it across to the Stellar network, you can access it through Lobstar, Stellar Term, Stellar X, and view it on Stellar Expert. It's a physical account that you have a public address to, a private address to, and it's secured by a passphrase through Lobster. Worst case scenario, that has an issue. I still have my public key, my private key on the Stellar network. I can use one of the other interfaces or exchanges on the Stellar network to access those funds. There's no loss. Yeah. The thing is, mm -hmm. unless you delete it from the Stellar network or transfer Mm -hmm. it out, Mm -hmm. it's still there. Yeah. If Lobster decides to crash or Stellar Term decides to crash or Stellar X decides to close up shop and move, Mm -hmm. I've got another avenue. Mm -hmm. But if I've invested through a hot exchange that takes my money and gives me a promise. Well, we yeah, all know have any that promises. Don't you, we? you don't hold anything. And, and, and uh, the, the thing there too, to remember is this guys. So when you're talking about any monetary as instrument, it has to have three qualities, no matter what. Number one has to be a store of value. It has to have a unit of account and it has to be a medium of exchange. That any monetary instrument that ever exists, whether it has been a stone, a pebble, a bead, or a piece of a rock that's nice and shiny, uh, gold or silver, uh, whatever, it has to meet these three conditions. Ask yourself this, would that define XRP? Could that define XLM? Sure, it could. Why? Because it has a store of value. It has a unit of account. And it's a medium of exchange. In fact, right now, people are transacting in those ecosystems outside of the fiat system altogether. A lot of people are afraid of central bank digital currencies because the way in which the narrative is coming out about them. So, of course, in totalitarian states, you're flat out seeing them tied to a social credit system. And I'll tell you what, that's the wet dream of all of the the European Central Bank certainly wants to see something like that. In fact, they came up with a laundry list, even so much as to say who should be a sanctioned merchant under the under the European Central Bank's idea of a central bank digital currency. But the thing is, you can opt out of a CBD system by holding on to some of these assets because you can utilize them right now, you know? Now, having said that, you know, there's a lot of misnomers out there um, with respect to central bank digital currencies. Number one is, it's it, people are coming out and saying, oh, the private ledger. Well, there's not just one private ledger. In fact, with Ripple, what they're constructing, they flat out came out and said in 2021 that they were they were building private ledgers off of the XRP ledger as a model. Now, they weren't necessarily utilizing XRP as an asset on those central bank digital currency ledgers, right? But those were private ledgers. for So the United States would have a private ledger. The British pound would have a tr- private ledger. And they would create and they and they flat out tell you these are centralized systems, not like the XRP ledger, which, by the way, anybody with a computer can download XRP and operate a node right at home, right? Well, these are going to be centralized private ledgers. And of course, right now, there's a lot of testing going on in these marketplaces. The last time we were on, I think I showed you guys that central bank digital currency tracker. Well, that's what's going on. And so sure, you're going to see some things happen over here that you're they're looking at transacting. And I think one guy came out and said, oh, well, I saw XRP on there for $327,000. Well, no, he didn't. What he saw is a glitch or not necessarily a glitch, a test on a private ledger. And in fact, in his case, it was a Japanese private ledger, right? But there's nobody out there that's getting XRP for $327,000 and over here on the, on the public ledger, it's 40 cents. Now, I'm not saying that XRP will not hit astronomical value someday in the future, 
right? But what I'm saying is right now, as we speak, that is a misunderstanding in a huge one. And then you've got folks that, you know, like, for instance, what Shane is saying, it's true. On these centralized exchanges, you're not really holding any digital assets because you don't hold the keys themselves. You take it off those exchanges and you can, but where, where do most people want to take it off? They want to take it off into a cold storage wallet. Now, the three most popular are Ledger, Treasure, and Decent. So you've got this narrative that's just come out in the last few weeks and creating a bunch of fear that at some point they could either confiscate your uh, digital assets or your, you know, your device and uh, or delist, quote unquote, uh, de-support you know, the the native asset, XRP or XLM or whatever. But even if they did that, Shane is exactly right. It does not matter. Why? Because your assets are on the blockchain and you can access those assets directly through the XRP ledger yourself. Now, most people don't understand that because when they're getting into this space, they just have not been educated enough to truly know what it is. They They get that there's value there but they don't understand how the mechanism works because what we're dealing with here and now is the protocol. You're investing literally in the protocol. Not like when the internet came out, you can invest in a .com address, but you didn't get to invest in hypertext transfer protocol. Hmm. Big, big difference. Anyway. Yeah. Well, and, and this and I is think a lot it's, about it's... what your, your channel is about, right, David? I mean, you help guide people through, yeah, making some of these decisions. Part of why we have this show is to have people on where, you know, Scott and I may or may not know about certain subjects, but sure, we're, we're, part care. of our job is to create mm -hmm. a place of trust so that we can, you know, people can find us and then we can say, hey, check out Shane, check out the collective, you know, learn about um, Greg Brown, uh, you know, or Quanta Brownie as he goes by, learn about the lobster wallet, you know, learn how you can invest. And with, with David, you know, yeah, we've listened to a digital perspective. We listened to digital mm -hmm. asset investor, but we've never talked to them. What's great about this is we're getting to know you. We're getting to know your mind and what you're about. And, and, and mm -hmm. we can send people over to your channel so that they can learn more about it. Now, I know, I know that there's a video that you're releasing in a few days. Do, do yeah. you care to touch base a little bit about what that topic might be? Sure. So um, I recently had some folks reach out to me from Reaper Financial. Now, Reaper Financial, if I could, if I, am I able to just share my screen? Yeah, I, I, I set that up so you can share your screen. Oh, okay. So let me just uh, let me just go over here and just give you an idea of who Reaper Financial is. So Reaper Financial, actually, these guys were one of the one of fourteen people who filed a amicus brief. So here is, and this was back in November, Reaper Financial seeks leave to file an amicus brief. Well, they actually did file it. And I had, uh, these guys reached out to me and I was like really uh, encouraged when they did because their CEO, this guy right here, Patrick Riley, um, he actually came on and he did a 45 minute interview and really peeled back the onion in a big way. And not only that, he revealed some really amazing type of lobbying that is going on behind the scenes. You will be blown away when you see this. It's truly something amazing. And he shared that with us. And I'm going to be posting that on Wednesday. And hey, the chief legal counsel for Reaper is Fred Rispoli, which this Fred, this is lawyer Fred that everyone talks about when they're in the Twitterverse on when they're dealing with XRP and the XRP army and all these various things. Well, Fred actually did a ton of work writing up their amicus brief in this case. So this is going to be a really great interview. I'm going to publish it on Wednesday. I'm going to try and actually have it out at 7 p.m. Texas time <laughs> on Wednesday. And I think it's going to be quite eye-opening. I was like blown away totally. And I've, you know, I've been immersed in this whole case and some of the stuff that he revealed was really quite amazing. So I thought that was really cool. So uh, yeah. So anyway, that's one of the things that we're definitely going to do. And it was really something to get that opportunity to really talk to him. And he went into great detail and was amazingly transparent, which, you know, I, I found very endearing because a lot of times in this 
space. A lot of folks are really holding their cards, right? Because, you know, like they're just not sure what information they can trust out there in the public so that it doesn't get manipulated and construed and all this. Well, he came out like, so Patrick basically was coming out and he was saying, hey, listen, I really don't care who gets the credit for this at the end of the day. I just want to see it happen because it's going to be amazing for this entire space. And so I have to give him a lot of credit for doing that. So I'm looking so, forward to Wednesday putting that out. Yeah, I can't I, wait I, to see it. I appreciate that. Well, part part of why I, you know, and uh, and bringing some of this stuff up, I'm someone that, and it was through a friend of Scott and I's. I was involved in, in something called USI Tech, and it was this Bitcoin mining. And you know, there was like, well, you know, uh, we're, we're such good. I'd bet our friendship on it. Well, I I don't talk to this friend much anymore. But <laughs> um, needless to say, I don't. I don't like to see people get taken advantage of. And right. after, of after someone that's been taken advantage of myself um, in, in, in business, watching my dad get taken advantage of in business. And so, you know, I, I kind of, I guess I have a, an older brother type of, of mentality. And so that's why I like to have guys on like you is because, you know, I, I want people to know as they navigate this world, like what, what is XRP? Well, they can go to these channels, they go to your channel and they can learn about it, how to invest mm -hmm. in it. Um, now, we did talk about that a little bit in the pre-show. Mm -hmm. If someone wants to buy 50, 100 bucks XRP or something, okay, maybe go to the exchange, get buy it there, you know, put it in your cold storage or or XUMM or, you know, which is um, a, 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 the ledger, the XRP ledger. Yeah, the Zoom but, wallet, yeah. Yeah, so, so is there an amount if someone was really thinking okay i want to i want to invest you know maybe sell some of my stocks i'm not telling people to do this or some no, of my course. silver or whatever and then i want to invest in in getting some xrp what is like the minimum that you would suggest going through someone else not just buying it on the ledger and and mm -hmm. how would someone navigate that and any insight in that because yeah. there's the people out there that don't even know where to start so when we're dealing with exchanges of course, the three prominent ones in the United States are Uphold, Coinbase, and Kraken. Now, those are centralized exchanges. And like Shane so aptly put, there's such a great vulnerability there because, number one, you don't get to know what level of solvency any of these exchanges have. I mean, who would have ever thought before this whole FTX debacle happened that S FTX was in any danger whatsoever, being that it was such a prominent exchange. Well, you just don't get to see the behind the scenes stuff like that. And so when you're getting new into this space, oftentimes you're just buying it, thinking of it like a traditional thing that somebody is just custodying your stock certificates or whatever, but it's nothing like that. In fact, in the exchange, like we've Shane has mentioned, it's just a ledger entry until you take it off, right? Now, there is another avenue that a person can use. They don't have to utilize exchanges. They can actually get a broker. Now, what is the difference? Well, when you go to a cryptocurrency exchange or a digital asset exchange, if you want to use that terminology, you are acting as your own broker and you're interacting with that exchange. You put money on there. And regardless how simple or complicated the platform is as you do it, it doesn't matter because it, by definition, you're acting as your own broker. There's no broker there. And so you're literally dealing with that one exchange. However, when you're dealing with a broker, your broker has access to a multiplicity of exchanges and perhaps even private buyers. Now, in the in the you know stock world and and the trading world and the markets world, this is called over the counter trading. Now a lot of folks will come out and say, "Hey, if all these big whales are buying XRP and that, why am I not seeing a big change in the price?" Well, I'll tell you why. It's because of how the markets work. These guys are not going on to a centralized exchange and making their purchases. They're going through an over-the-counter broker who spreads out all of that liquidity so it doesn't cost. So if, let's say a guy wanted to buy $10 million worth of XRP, well, he doesn't want to start buying it when he starts buying it at 40 cents. By the time he's done, it's $2.50, right? He wants to be able to get as much as he can, right, at the lowest price possible. OTC does that. And that's why you don't see big moves on that because... It is all spread out. And what a broker does is they'll buy it at different intervals. 
and at multiple exchanges simultaneously. Now, I personally have been using a, I use a broker myself, and I've been using this broker since uh, probably about 2020, and it's Caleb and Brown out of Australia. And look, they they have, I would say, hun- there's and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of various digital assets, and they deal in hundreds of countries around the world. Now, the amazing thing is this, when you go on to these exchanges, a lot of times you're dealing with specific trading pairs. For instance, you can only buy XLM utilizing USDT or something like that. Well, with a broker, you can buy XLM with ADA, with VeChain, and, and, and it doesn't matter what the trading pair is because they can put it together for you. Now, with Caleb and Brown, I know that the fee there is there's no uh, deposit fee. There's no withdrawal fee. There's no holding fee. There's nothing like that. And you pay, I think, what, three and a half percent or something like that in terms of your fee. And if you deal with and another, hey, this is the biggest one for me. When you're dealing with a centralized exchange like Coinbase, like Crack and or Uphold, and you have a problem, you're writing a support ticket. Excuse me. What happens with that ticket? It gets bounced around the system and who knows how fast they get it back. You literally feel like you're being held hostage. And at any time that they think there's a problem, they shut you off. They don't allow you to withdraw or whatever. Oh, we're holding everything until we clarify this. And you have to take 15 snapshots of yourself holding a piece of paper and who knows what all to kind of get access. Well, with a broker, you pick up the phone. You literally got someone you're talking to on the line. That is phenomenal and certainly worth the three and a half percent of the fee now i know with caleb and brown if you're doing a their minimum trade well i'll give you an example i have an otc trading account with kraken and i can tell you right now the minimum trade on that account is a hundred thousand dollars minimum because why they don't want the majority of people having access to this kind of uh, purchasing this avenue for purchasing. And let me say this, a lot of people are under the guy thinking that, oh, it's illegal for Americans to hold XRP. That is a bunch of hogwash. It's just that exchanges are too afraid of the SEC to have listed it. And they're more afraid of their liability, but there's nothing preventing a US citizen or resident from holding XRP. But you can go outside of the borders and you can buy it. So with a broker, you can get XRP like with Caleb and Brown. You know, and so, you know, you're not dealing with all of this kind of like stuff in the background. You're dealing face to face up front. And look, you know, it's not too difficult to go out there and they do. And by the way, with Caleb and Brown, you know what their minimum is when you're dealing with them on the phone? Two thousand dollars minimum. And then if you want to utilize their platform, five hundred bucks minimum. You know, that is nothing, you know, like, I mean, most over the counter traders are wanting tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in the minimum trade. Why? Because they want to get huge commissions out of it. Right. Right. That's how over, that is the business of over. And, and so that's how the market works with over the counter trading. And, and um, you know, that's why I, I choose to, I choose that over just dealing with centralized exchanges. And another thing too, in, let's say there is a massive bull run. How many times have I seen Coinbase go down because they can't take the All the time. It's annoying. All the time. So with these guys, you phone them up and you let, and by the way, they do have, you can store your assets there if you wish, or they can send it to a cold storage wallet. They use fire blocks. So they actually put it in cold storage themselves. It's not sitting on the exchange. But another thing is that happens is that when you phone them up and say, Hey, can you sell at this price? They, Put it like I said, they blanketed it out there to multiple different exchanges and individuals and over the counter traders and all that kind of stuff. And they have massive access to liquidity when you're trying to do it. Oh, I'm going to go into Coinbase. Oh, I better get over there in the crack. And oh, I better get back on the KuCoin wherever you're storing this stuff. And by the time it's all done, the price is already dropped and it's over, man. Whereas uh, with these guys, it's it's a lot more secure now. On my on my uh, on my channel, um, they've given me a specific link that's in the description of all my videos. Someone clicks that link, they can go on there, register, and they're going to get three and a half percent, which is the lowest trading fee um, through that referral link. So I'll throw that out there. Little shameless plug. No, I guess. That, that's cool. <laughs> no, that's good please. to know that people are in good hands. I mean, 
I, you know, I don't know if there's companies that do that in, in the U S you're using a, an Australian based company. That's great. But yeah. um, I, they're, I just... they're centralized. Their, their central headquarters is in Australia, but I know they have offices all over. All okay. Over. That's good to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I haven't w used one yet myself. I, I haven't bought in, um, in big enough increments to do lump sums um, at, at this point yet, but it's, it's really good to know that, you know, that that exists. Yeah. Any questions oh, yeah. that Scott might have? Oh, oh, okay. so, so many wanted to comment well, go ahead. yeah we, we can yeah we definitely want uh to promote what you're doing and we'll put your uh uh your latest interview that we're excited about seeing on our telegram yeah, so. I'm, i can't wait for it to be released it's wednesday uh at 7 p.m uh central standard time that's right it's Texas. going to be out yeah yeah, yeah that's texas time yeah that's right it's, it's the just, only time that confirm, really exists just to confirm it's time. that's just to confirm it's wednesday Wednesday, 7 yeah. Yeah. December 7th, Central 7 time. Central time, Texas, then. Texas <laughs> on digital outlook on okay. YouTube. <laughs> so, so I got to ask this one question. The, the, the question stays the same. The answer changes by the hour, but um, you know, we've been watching this ridiculous sec case. Um, Gensler's clearly in hot water with this, his involvement in FTX. Uh, you know, it seems like every time we think, oh, it's going to finally be in January, it's finally going to be, at, you know, whatever the month might be, someone files a continuance and it's granted. For XR, for, for, you're talking about for Ripple? Yes. Okay, just to clarify. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the uh, last filings have just gotten placed. So the, the, the response to the summary judgment briefs, that's it. This is it. So it is it. So okay. The last filings. Yep. This is it before summary judgment. Now she can, uh, you know, judge uh, Torres can take, you know, a little bit more time. I think there, I think there's people that are saying, Hey, you could see something happen in January. You could see, Hey, we've just had a whole bunch of, you know, uh, information fly that by December 2nd or December 5th, something was going to happen. I reported that and I got blamed as being a date setter. I said, Hey, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just reporting what people are saying. Right. But, but sometimes people don't hear that. They hear you saying what someone else said. And then it's now you said it, you see, Oh gosh. So it's yeah. kind of like, yeah. you know, Hey, I read this article. The article said thus and such. Whoa. You're anyway. Um, so we could probably see something maybe in January, maybe by March. But I mean, I think a lot of folks out there right now are saying, hey, more than likely, no later than the end of June, we're going to see something by, in this case, a decision is going to come out. And so, you know, you got all these legal analysts. I am not a lawyer and I am not a legal analyst, but I do quote some of them like Jeremy Hogan, Fred Rispoli, John Deaton and people like that, you know, in these articles that come out. And so, hey, I'm just like everybody else. I'm I'm following the breadcrumbs and keeping my ear to the ground. But I do think we're getting close. Obviously, every day that goes by is a day closer to settlement at some point. Yeah, and, and a victory uh, uh, for Ripple is definitely going to have an impact on uh, price action. I believe it will. Right. Do you think that's going to be enormous instantaneously, or do you think that's going to going to be spread out over a period of time? Well, I think just to just to jump in quickly, I go, think that uh, the other the other important thing to keep in mind is that the longer the settlement takes, the bigger ripple gets internationally. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's dude. at the point where great point. The results of the case are only going to impact America. It's not going to impact the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. I don't think David agree on that. That yeah, because right now the rest of the world is already designated. Yeah, they've, they've built and created the rest of the world already, and unfortunately, sadly, yeah. the U.S. has come and last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. of their own internal bureaucracy yet again. What's amazing you know? about and, that too, Shane, is when you look at the ISO two hundred twenty-two timeline. Isn't yeah. it interesting that the United States is the last one to go in? And I also on why. top of that, well, right now they're holding, you know, they have uh, they have the world reserve currency status in there. And of course, you know, they're the they're the last ones to look at at potentially issuing their central bank. Digital. I mean, I don't know if any kind of strategic thinking is behind it, but I wouldn't doubt it if it was. <laughs> well, you, you'd load on top of that as well. The uh, the BRICS TSA uh, as now that uh, is formed, you've got other countries of the world saying, well, we're going to use gold to trade for our oil. Yeah. And guess what? It's going to Russia. Yeah. 
it's not going through the fiat. Yeah. Nor the petrodollar. Yeah. And the writing is on the wall. Yeah. And it's been it's been it's been scribbled by the rest of the world, not the once powerful nation of Mm -hmm. the United States of America being the corporation. Now the United States Mm -hmm. moving into next year, I think we have enormous opportunity, but Mm-hmm. There's still some, uh, how do we say, cleanup that mm-hmm. needs to be finalised. And, yeah. you know, the whole FTX, the whole Ginsler thing, all of that yeah. is part and parcel. Yeah. But having said that, I mean, the, the, the digital economy is going to burgeon forward without any of these little individual, uh, not to say they're, they're small or minute, but these these smaller skirmishes mm-hmm. will have individually no impact on where the digital economy is going because yeah, it's even happening whether you like it or even not. David now I you know it, it, for your merchandise off your uh, wonderful YouTube channel another plug uh, <laughs> if if you if you were to log into a web application called Lumens Pay as a website. Mm-hmm. Uh, no data is held there. You put a G address in for the Stellar network that happens to be a separate lobster account for digital outlook merchandise, mm-hmm. starlobster.co. Mm-hmm. I can purchase a cup from you that you've got at $32 US. Not on the think of that much, but... <laughs> Auto, auto converts the lumen value. Yeah. I transfer yeah. 120 lumen. That yeah. goes straight to your lobster wallet. You see that figure come up. You post me out the cup. Yeah. No bank fees, no charges, nothing other than the XLM transfer fee. Mm-hmm. You've got your digital coin on one side, You what you've asked for. I've paid for it on this side. Right. Transaction complete. Yeah, that's what we were talking about early with respect yeah, to the, world the monetary instruments. I mean, there are people transacting with XLM, XRP, and all these other digital assets right now. And, um, you know, I mean, hey, my coffee cups aren't 32 bucks, by the way. <laughs> but, but, uh, hey, in, in Aussie right, right, dollars, they are, mate. Uh, they, yeah, maybe. Trust but, right. the, you know, hey, that, I don't even set the price. That's a spread shop. So, you know what they're like, right? So, but hey, you, you, know, say, you know what we're like by now. Yeah. We have a dig at each other. When you know, you... I'm, I'm, in, I'm in poverty, poverty coin. All right. Yeah, there you I'm go. in poverty coin at this end. Where you, when, when we're talking about XRP and you consider that it had been delisted from all of these exchanges and basically shut out from the world's largest economy, you're talking about a spring that has been so compressed, just right down like that. And if they win, by the way, a win for XRP, a win for Ripple is a win for all of crypto. I think it will be the catalyst that will literally start the next major bull run in this space. It will literally go nuts. Now, that's my personal opinion, because you're watching an asset that has been just held, held down. I want you to think about this. In 2017, all XRP was doing was just tinking along, tinking along, tinking along, tinking along. And then one day, literally, if you look at the charts, one day, bang, like bang, it just shot off and went from 20 cents after it tinkered along all like this to $3.84. Now, if you had a bought it way down here in 2017, you were getting Wait, it at did. a hair over half a cent, $6,000 one year later was worth $3.84 million. And that is an absolutely unbelievable move. Now, will we see a fractal like that? Well, no one has a crystal ball, you know, but I can tell you this, if you're shut out of the world's greatest economy, and in the last bull run, remember this, after the SEC lawsuit hit XRP dropped to 17 cents. That was a big drop at the time. I was there a little, like I said, I bought a whole bag of it way the day before it actually right. happened. So I just ended up buying more. Now, where did it go to? Went to $1.97. Do you realize that's 1,100%? Yeah. During that time, tell me what equity did that. What stock did, 11, did a 1,000% move in a period of about six months? 
It would have been one of the best investments you could have ever made, even with the SEC lawsuit on there. Now, that's hindsight. And we can all look back and we can give commentary on hindsight. But I'm not giving financial advice having some foresight. Now, I take four things into consideration when I take a look at any digital asset. First thing I look at is real-world utility. Does XRP have it? You better believe it. What about a management team? Yeah, I take a look at the management team. And on that management team, you have got some phenomenal players. You don't take people like the likes of Rosie Rios, a former secretary of the Treasury of the United States, and decides instead of going to the book circuit and the speech circuit where she could have made millions of dollars or an Ivy League school as a professor. No, she decides, hey, I'm moving over here to Ripple. <laughs> I'm going to work for this company that's going to change the financial world. Then you look at strategic partnerships. Like I said, you got nation states utilizing their technology to build their the infrastructure for their monetary systems. Now you look at technical analysis, which is the price action that I just quoted. You put all that together. For me, I have absolute, I have just, and I've done my due diligence, my personal research in all of this. And so I have 100% confidence. Now I can't give you my confidence. Why? Because I've already, you, I, I, it's like trying to take your brain and put it into someone else. You do the research for yourself. And I'll tell you what, the answers that you're going to be the most convinced by are the ones you find for yourself. Zero doubt. Absolutely no doubt about that. And that's why I feel so confident. No one's going to talk me in or talk me out of it. And if I could talk you into it, someone else could talk you out of it right? You need to be convinced on your own accord. And I'll, and for me, when I see this compressed spring, and I watched XRP, by the way, do the move that I just quoted, because I've been in this space long before the lawsuit was ever dropped. And I didn't even sell one XRP, even when it did go all the way up to $1.97, because I know what it is, and I know what I hold. And that's my personal view. And only just accumulated, and even now, still, you know, adding to my position with XRP. Um, and that's my, and that's not financial advice. That's just me feeling that level of, of you know, um, a, a, of confidence in what I see here, right? And so, if you're going to say, "Hey, look, is there potential?" Well, of course, there's potential. How great it is! I think to me, it's going to be one of the greatest assets that mankind has ever created. Now, that is my personal opinion. But that's what I really believe. And I think what if if when Ripple wins this case, it is not going to be just a win for Ripple and XRP. It's going to be a win for this entire digital asset space. Why? Because now we have a framework, whether the SEC likes it or not. They say, oh, come in and we'll talk. And you, and you get nothing out of them. They don't want to take a stand on anything. Well, the court's going to give us a stand, aren't they? They're going to make a decision. They're going to develop a framework and it's going to be out there. And now we have something. So that's how I feel about it. Regulatory clarity overnight. Well, somewhat. Well, like, remember, it's there's it. three branches of government, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've got Congress, you've got the executive branch, and you have the judicial branch, right? Yep. So what's probably going to happen is a decision is going to get made at the judicial level, and that's going to be the understanding until Congress gets out there and writes some laws or the executive branch comes out and does some executive orders. Mm. That's probably what's going to happen. It, uh, quick question. We've we've been wondering for a while, maybe for the audience, what is flare? When is the flare drop going to happen? If anybody yeah, knows, and what what will it what will it represent? Where is so, it going? Flare, interestingly enough, so flare is a decentralized finance type of network system, and so when I say decentralized finance network system. And of course, they if issue SF assets. Now, it's interesting to me <laughs> that on the buildup, get this and just think of this. Before XRP, this SEC lawsuit dropped in December, there were a ton of people buying all kinds of XRP. Why? Because Flair had announced that there was going to be an airdrop and they were going to take a snapshot on December 12th of 2020. Well, the SEC is there to protect the average investor, right? So let me ask you this. Why were there no shots across the bow? Why didn't they come out and say, hey, we're not so sure about XRP when they knew people were buying it up like crazy so they could participate in this, you know, snapshot that was about to take place. But they waited until people bought it up like crazy so they'd be participants in the snapshot, flare snapshot, which was a one-to-one. -one. Right at that time, if you had one XRP, you got one flare, 
after the snapshot's done and all the buying had happened, right? What did they do? Bang. Then they dropped the lawsuit. Well, that's just a little too convenient if you ask right, me. Exactly. And, and so then, <laughs> then every time there's been a hint of a settlement, you hear Hugo Filion coming out. Oh, we're ready to distribute the flare tokens. So the next distribution date has been set for January 9th of 2023. So a lot of people are speculating, of course, that we'll have a settlement in this case by that time. Let's pray that that's true. <laughs> but that's what's coming out. And that and Flare is, um, you know, a decentralized network where you're able to actually stake your assets and you can earn, you know, yield and reward. And you can wrap your right now, like with Songbird, you can wrap your Songbird, you can wrap your XRP. It's a little too much for just what we're talking about right now. But that's basically in an essence what it is. Much appreciated. Yeah, I was going to say that whole wrapped asset and staking and liquidity pools. You know, there's more than enough information on YouTube from a lot of credible guys that right way smart specialized. Yeah, exactly. Specialized in putting that info together. Yeah. Um, but for not to downplay the individual, but for the average person who wants to get in, it's like trying to explain the difference between conventional computing now and quantum computing. Yeah. You know, there needs to be a... There's a big learning curve for sure. Oh, yeah. massive, massive. But at the end of the day, the difference between conventional computing now and quantum computing is conventional computing is switches and relays that compute on a one or a zero. Whereas quantum is instead of it being a one and a zero, it's a one and or a zero. And or simultaneously both. Simultaneously yeah. uh, in a globe in 3D. Like the yeah. one of the greatest explanations I heard of of it is think of uh, conventional computing as two sides of a coin. Yeah. All right, you've got a head or you've got a tail. Well, you put that coin on its edge and flick it, it spins, you've got the head to tail, the head to tail, the head to tail, the head to tail, and you've got the outside circumference of the coin. Yeah. That's the difference between the power of the two computers. Yeah. Conventional, head or a tail. Yeah. Quantum computing, head, tail, head, tail, rim, circular. Yeah. It can just compute and perform so many more functions in exponentially a greater rate and a huger capacity. That is something that we will need for the quantum financial system and the digital space moving forward so that we can step away from making a transaction and having to wait for it banks to be processed in different yeah. currencies cross border the whole thing that is where the cbdc's come into it at that level yeah it's really also, it really is a big and it is going to be quite amazing and there will be, be, I, be I suspect in, there's going to be a ton of things invented that haven't even been invented yet that are going to make it feel seamless for a lot of folks down the road. But that's yeah. the beauty of getting in now. We're in our absolute infancy, practically. And so you're almost like you're not necessarily a trailblazer, but you're certainly a pioneer. Right. <laughs> Correct. Right. Correct. Right. And that, that might be a lead into uh, number three, guys. Uh, number three? <laughs> <laughs> oh you well, mean oh, you trailblazer pioneer or then there's is that what you're going with it <laughs> our, our well, next think... catch up and discussion oh yeah. <laughs> oh right exactly Part that three. number three that oh, number, that number three. Three. segue segway sent segway sent segway missed I missed it yes Perfectly timed Perfect. as well, because I think we're right at about an hour. Yeah, we're right about an hour, and we, we want to yeah. wrap it up. And I know David has sure. to get back to uh, the lovely yeah. one. Uh, in closing, David, where be, where can people find you? Thank you so much. And uh, just no worries, no worries. No worries. So I'm on I'm at Digital Outlook. At you know basically I don't have a Twitter. By the way, I don't do Instagram. I don't do any of that stuff. Um, I'll never WhatsApp anybody. By the way, oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know, and uh, any of that kind of stuff. I just have the YouTube channel. My motivation for doing the whole thing from the get go was to just give people uh, a little insight into any information that I had and enough information for them to make up their own mind. Look, I'm not trying to convince anybody, you know, and try to make a decision for another person. Look, I, I even do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And what I tell folks right, uh, right off the bat is, hey, look, I can't tell you 
what you should, what to do. But what I can tell you is how to do it necessarily, you know? And so a lot of it has to do with setting goals and knowing what it looks like to, to execute that and to stick with it. You know, that is one of the biggest things that we have gotten so far away from is perseverance. Perseverance is literally, you know, we just don't have that stick to itiveness. And it's amazing how lucky those that persevere truly are. <laughs> you know, it, it it just has something to do with the fabric of who you are. It's called delayed gratification. We've walked away from that. Look, I think I shared one time when I learned how to play the guitar. My fingers ached like crazy and they cracked and they bled and da 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 da. But I kept with it. One day I picked up this guitar and all of a sudden, my fingers had muscle memory and they went to where they were. And then I learned how to strum. Well, now what used to be painful is almost effortless. And it works that way when we build character into our lives. Look, these are gifts you give yourself and no man can take them from you. Nobody, you know, the quality of your character is not defined by what other people think of you or whether or not they affirm what you believe. You decide who you're going to be in this world world and thank god you know there's martin luther king he came out there and he literally said look people are going to be judged by the cons the content of their character and not some word in his case he said the color of their skin but the reality is not just look people right now it's crazy how many people will judge books by their covers i get it all the time get it all the time. I put out a catchy title and a nice little thumbnail and I get judged on the cover. They didn't even read or listen to the video. Jeez. Didn't even listen to it. You know, I put out one there and, and, and it was a question and why it wasn't marked as a question, you know? Um, and it was basically saying the question was, um, are, you know, are uh, cold storage wallets delisting XRP question mark. Oh, that's clickbait, blah, 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 blah. Well, do they know how many questions I got like that in the comments? And that in that video, I was answering that question and I was saying, this is something you don't need to worry about because of thus, 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 and thus. Well, a lot of people watched it, found it great, but there are people in there that are just judging it by its cover and not really taking even the time to hear the argument. And I think that's a sad, sad place that we've reached here in society as a whole. Agreed. And look, for me, you know, um, there is a level of responsibility for our fellow man. You know, we do. We're responsible for one another. You know, they say that there is this whole uh, thing about being five people removed from anybody. So put it this way. I've met the prime minister of Canada. Now, I don't know him personally, but I've actually talked with the guy face to face, had my hand right on his shoulder and back and him on mine. Look, the picture, you know, like a whole thing like that. Now, have you guys, you know, you guys have met me. Well, that's only one more person removed, right? And on and on. It's like we are a very small community, believe it or not. Yeah. I'm sure there's people you guys know that knows this person, knows that person who knows Trump or something like that. Well, right? our buddy Derek well, Johnson just, just met Trump yesterday. Well, there you go. Same. It's the, the reverse is the same. So how close is that network? And yeah. information, true, real information, doesn't flow necessarily through mediums. It flows through people. Exactly. And I think we have to get back to that. I think we really need to get back to people because we're a lot closer connected than what we really think we are. Yes. And you can get on there and feel like you have this powerful cloak of anonymity. And, you know, you use it in, uh, can be used in a very visceral way. But the reality is, it's kind of like, you know, when uh, I forget it was Jeff Goldblum, you know, when he's on Jurassic Park and he had that butterfly theory, you know, <laughs> basically it's kind of like that. Those ripples, pardon the pun, do get out there. They have the fact, you know, that's why you have sayings like what comes around goes around, you know, you reap what you sow, da 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 da, all that kind of stuff. And for me, I look at this life and I realize, hey, look, this is my journey. It is certainly not my destination. Now, I'm mapping out a life, just like everybody maps out a life, whether it's through our relationships, our children, our investments, or whatever. And it's all about the experience as we pass through. But someday, it's going to be my last day. 
well, what kind of life am I leaving back here that other people are going to read? That's why it's his story, history, mm. right? It's his story. What, well, what, what story am I leaving for other people to read? And another thing too, sometimes when people, now I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Well, I may be the only Jesus that someone ever sees. And they're watching me. And they may never say one word to tell me that they're watching me. So am I doing it? You know, am I living this life, you know, with no conscientious viewpoint of just how it might affect other people? Look, that's where I come back full circle, that we're responsible for our fellow man. That's just how I take it. And so, you know, if I sow a little seed here, there's a saying, it says one waters or one plants and other waters, but the Lord grants the increase. I don't know what I'm adding to something or, hey, maybe I'm taking some pain away. It's not always what I add. Maybe, maybe it's just the help of comforting somebody else to take something away, right? So anyway, for me, that's what's most valuable, you know? And thank, I've, I've experienced some great blessing in my life, but I want to pay that forward. And that's, that's what means the most to me. So, and I appreciate you guys giving me no, the opportunity to share all that, said, man. It's you, you, yeah. you're, you're such a great fit to our show. And Shane, anything you want to, I don't know if you want to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not much I can add to that uh, other than to echo that sentiment. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I stay involved in it as well. Because, I mean, to be honest, uh, you know, what I've been able to secure on the, the digital asset side, uh, you know, just waiting for that realisation that when it all comes to fruition, that it's going to be a, uh, you know, pay off what I've immediately got to pay off and then it's into how can I turn this around instead of that squirrel away all the nuts so that I've got every single one of them it's like well I've now got you know I've got at least half a dozen yeah. humanitarian projects and one of them is to reach out and connect with the guys that have been doing the heavy lifting you know our veterans you know, the yeah, ones that have yeah. been doing all the hard yards behind the yeah, scenes yeah, that uh, will carry, uh, you know, whether those people are connected enough to, 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 to understand what's been going on under the surface, so to speak, and clearing out. Uh, you know, they are going to need a heap of support. The young ones are going to need a heap of support. Yeah, you know, some good. of them that haven't seen daylight in their entire existence yeah, you know that's, there's, that's there's one subject yeah for sure yeah there's one there's one great video that i shared uh the other day of uh it was obviously a a military group in a uh a c-130 or a, or a large aircraft and there's just one one soldier in greens amid a uh or fatigues in the mid of a, a sea of other soldiers and he's just cradling and feeding a young child and he's just continually, you know, and that may that may be the first compassionate contact that that mm -hmm. little one has ever felt, has ever seen. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's just so moving, you know, the, the, the stuff those guys have seen and, you know, the way things have gone, it's all wrapping up in the same process that, this great awakening uh, mm -hmm. is opening eyes on a lot of fronts, the least of which is the digital asset side, but flipping that around and being able to set up care centers for those guys, for the little ones, for our homeless, that you look at, you look at the amount that no disrespect that Congress or government here in Australia there's no other way to say it, you know, they'll piss the figure up against the wall for, you know, marketing costs for, uh, you know, the last election when you know that there's no point in them spending the money because you already know who's getting in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> left, that's wing, good. left wing, right wing, same bird, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but to be able to take figures like that and spin those around into a worthwhile project, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and a very needy project that, issues that we shouldn't be dealing with as a, as a, as a free and proper society. Yeah. 
So that's what it needs to get back to. Uh, you know, not a handout per se, but a hand up yes. yeah. in society. And that's where it's got to get to so that we're lifting everybody up to the same level playing field. And that's a term that's been thrown out there by none other than the man himself. That's and right. that's yeah. that's the journey that we're all on, whether it's, yeah. you know, whether it's music or digital assets or, you know, community involvement, it's just everybody up yeah. to the same level so that we can move forward That's as right. a society. You know? Yeah, never yeah. underestimate the power of purpose. Just don't That's do it. it. Have a purpose and live life on purpose. But make sure your purpose isn't, you know, something that is just a self-gratifying thing. Because like I say, you know, this is our journey. And it's at some service, point in service time, to others as opposed to service yep. to self. Exactly. It's you going know? to end sometime. And we can enjoy the ride and we and to do it together. But you know, have a purpose. That's it. Band, band of brothers. That's what I like. Band of brothers. You know? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for the closing statements. And All right, uh, thank you. We'll be back. We'll see when, hopefully in the next few weeks for part three. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it all goes. It's just getting busier and busier as Christmas is getting closer and closer. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, well, I, well I hope you guys have a happy I'll holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll, uh, we'll hold it off for January and we'll see what's end. But anyway, all right, gentlemen, good night. Thank you very all much. Right. We'll talk soon. Thank you guys. Bless Thanks you. for having us. You guys are all great. Right. Cheers. Yeah.